We are here at the University of Tampa where they recently unveiled the latest addition to its sprawling campus, a new $40 million plus 91,000 square foot graduate and health studies building that houses close to 20 advanced CAE healthcare training simulators, which provide state-of-the-art medical training for students. Joining us is founding director, Dr. Jana Yili. Thank you for having us, Dr. Yili. It is our pleasure to have you here. Why don't you give us a little background on yourself and then we'll get into what the program is. So I was a nurse before I became a physician assistant and then shortly thereafter fell into education but fell in love with it. Dr. Yili is driven by her love for teaching students and the diversity of her day. So I may be doing something like this with you right now. This morning I was spending a time in a focus group discussion with the students about kids with special needs and disabilities and tomorrow I'll be in the ER treating patients and reducing fractures. I mean, it's just the best of every possible world. Dr. Yili came to the University of Tampa specifically to launch this graduate program. The administration's dedication to providing the best possible education for their students gave her the confidence that this was the right place for her program. What we find now is you don't have as much patient access as you did in the good old days, if you will. Uh, when you'd see a whole group of students walking through the wards in the hospitals. And, and why is that? Well, part of it is just uh, patient satisfaction with having a whole group of students. Uh, I could see that be a little off-putting for, yeah. for some people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, surround their bed and such. So now we try to create that environment before we get to an actual human patient. She had previously started three different PA programs, but admits this new one by far is her favorite due to the technology involved. So a physician assistant is a graduate level trained medical provider. So the education is based on the medical model, which is why it's so important that we have an environment to train that's like a hospital. The course involves 15 months of classroom training referred to as the didactic year before students enter the lab portion of their training, which includes working on incredibly realistic models and simulators. Got our kit. We would teach the students how to clean it off. This is obviously a sterile procedure. Students can learn an array of different procedures from taking a heartbeat to testing medications on patients to document their physiological changes. The obvious advantage of models and simulators is that the students can make mistakes on their patients patients and learn from them an unlimited number of times. So we have CAE simulators here. We are demonstration site for their company. So we have several of the high fidelity simulators. Those are the ones that can talk and they can cry and they can uh, heartbeat and things like that. This particular model breathes, has a beating heart, and is even equipped with light sensitive eyes capable of pupillary response. We are also shown a task model where students can perform spinal punctures. So a lot of times if you have a patient with a fever, a headache, you're worried about meningitis, this is uh, one of those tests that just has to be done to look at the cerebral spinal fluid. Director of Simulation, Dr. Marisa Belote, shows us some of the more in-depth models, including Syndaver's synthetic cadaver. One of the things that's so great about the Syndaver is not only is it anatomically correct, well, what they paid attention to this company was the actual density and feel of each of the anatomical features. So as an example, Michael's going to show you the heart. So when you look at this heart, you're going to see that not only is it the appropriate shape, it's located in the, in the appropriate um, location, but the feel, the size, the weight has been so specifically designed. Unlike other synthetic cadavers on the market, Syndever models are made of a revolutionary compound that mimics real living tissue. This includes all organs and features of an actual human with a real human feel. Students also have access to an anatomage table, which is essentially a giant screen that students can virtually operate on. It has the human body that you can dissect all the way down to the blood vessels or bring it all the way back up to the skin. I think the biggest benefit is that people learn differently now. Every student has an iPhone or a, a smartphone that they're watching videos on. So sitting in a classroom for an hour or two hours of listening to somebody lecture with PowerPoints isn't as effective as spending 10 minutes in lecture and then going and touching and feeling that or seeing it play out in front of you. 
The program has been met with a positive reaction from the students, as they can appreciate the opportunity to work with models during their didactic period, versus having to wait until they're much further along in the program, or in some cases, when they are practicing for the first time in the field. The University of Tampa, the fa sheer facilities was a big draw to it. Um, because as Dr. Belote and Dr. Yeely talked about, is we want to make sure that these skills that we're in here practicing are um, something that we could really hone in and perfect that skill so when we do get to the actual patient, then it's not, okay, this is the first time I'm actually doing this. There are a wide range of simulators the students use for training, from obstetric models mimicking labor to toddler models where the child may have a fever and need medication, and even adult models where a heart attack or other life-threatening events may have occurred. Just before we started filming, I was downstairs playing with one of the mannequins with some virtual reality, and I can tell you my own heart rate started going up because we were bringing that patient through a cardiac arrest. And halfway through it, I'm an ER provider. Like, I was like, let's do so you, something. You've been there yeah. and done <laughs> like, that. I don't want to let this mannequin get to the point that it dies. So you really get immersed in it, and you start having a reaction to it. What's on the horizon? What's next? Because technology, as we know, is always continually growing. What's, what's next? Any ideas? The next big thing will be the use of virtual reality. Uh, being able to see the patient and have the patient talk to you in, through virtual reality and then to be able to physically touch the patient through virtual reality is probably going to be the next big thing in education. The final stage of training is real-world clinical rotations where students shadow a physician as they see patients. After each exam, the students give their own diagnosis of what they think is wrong and what the proper treatment should be. They spend almost 2,000 hours doing that. So what happens uh, after the 2,000 hours? Do they graduate? Do, what's the next step for the student? So there's one more step. They have to come back here and they have to show us everything they've learned all over again with those standardized patients and with the simulators so that we know 100% that they can go in and assess a patient, make a diagnosis and a treatment decision. The last step before students can practice is to take a board exam. Upon passing, this certifies them as medically trained physician assistants ready to enter the field. And so where would they typically go after their, you know, their basically freshman PA coming sure. straight out of school? What kind of job can they expect? Uh, it, the, field is wide open. So about 30% of PAs go into primary care, whether that's family medicine or women's health or pediatrics. About 70% go into specialty care, emergency medicine, cardiothoracic surgery, dermatology. Most of these jobs are open to new graduates and then they take you and they build upon that foundational knowledge to get you into the specialty. It is important to Dr. Yee Lee that both the clinical medicine course and procedure course are in alignment with the curriculum. So if the students are studying diseases of the heart, on the clinical side, they will also be practicing on simulators with those diseases on the procedure side. So they're getting it in multiple different aspects of their curriculum and learning all the pieces of it, and then we put it all together with the simulator or with the standardized patient. By utilizing state-of-the-art CAE simulators to provide incredibly realistic hands-on training, the University of Tampa is setting the bar for crafting the next generation of physician's assistants around the country. As much as you see here, there are other things that we need that we could use to educate our students and uh, provide them the best possible experience. Uh, we are always more than happy to take donations to the program that are specifically earmarked for the program, for the physician assistant training program, and we'll make sure that the students utilize the, those funds. Well, uh, I appreciate you having us stop by. Dr. Yeely doing um, incredible work here, training the next generation of physician's assistants, and uh, we appreciate you having us. All right, thank you. Thank you.